Hello, Sim Captains and crew. Welcome to Van Nuys Airport in Southern California. Today, we're going to learn a little about the LDA approach, what it is, and how to fly it. We'll be using the V Flight Air Cherokee 140 Modern today. Thank you for stopping by. in the intro we are flying the V-Flight Air Piper Cherokee 140 with the modern glass panel and we're flying out of Van Nuys Airport in California. This is the default scenery here on this kind of gloomy and dim day here. I'm not going to fly the whole procedure but we're going to talk first a little about an LDA. So what is an LDA? To simply define the acronym, it is a localizer type directional aid. And you may think, fantastic, that doesn't help me one bit. Well, let's go to the FAA handbook, 8083-16, and this is version Bravo, where it says, the LDA is a comparable use and accuracy to a localizer, but is not part of a complete ILS. The LDA course usually provides a more precise approach course than the similar Simplified Directional Facility SDF installation which may have a course width of 6 or 12 degrees. It continues, the LDA is not aligned with the runway. Straight in minimums may be published where alignment does not exceed 30 degrees between the course and runway. Circling minimums are only published where this alignment exceeds 30 degrees. A very limited number of LDA approaches also incorporate a glide slope. These are annotated in the plan view of the instrument approach chart with a note, LDA glide slope. Fantastic, so now that we've read the reg and know what it says, what does it actually mean and how do we use that information? Well, simply put, if the localizer is aligned within 3 degrees of the runway center line, it is identified as a localizer. From 3 to 30 degrees, it will be identified as an LDA, and straight-in minimums may be published. For approaches greater than 30 degrees, circling minimums will apply. If we look at the chart for Van Nuys, we can see it's an LDAC. This has circling minimums, as Category A and B aircraft have a decision height of 1500 feet and this is again a circle to land procedure. We'll continue to actually fly through this and kind of talk about it but if you take a look again at the chart you'll see that we actually intercept 90 degrees. The airport is over to the right but our approach course is coming in on a heading of 079. Now we'll speed up and time lapse some of the uh, positioning of this aircraft. One of the unique elements to this approach is we will actually tune up IBUR which is Burbank's localizer. So for this approach we will fly directly in on Burbank's localizer and then we'll make our turn once we have the airport in visual we'll turn off and enter a regular pattern uh, to continue our approach. And here we are outbound uh, heading roughly to Silex and the hold so we'll kind of fast forward through there, but we're really going to begin our approach on the 079 towards Silex, and then we'll break off for a visual right pattern. So we're tracking approximately the 242 radial out of Van Nuys. Uh, we're flying out here just to give ourselves some room to work the approach. We're going to tune up Nav 2 to uh, 113.1, the Van Nuys VOR. That way we can use VOR1 or the VLOC1 as the localizer indicator. So now we'll go ahead and tune that up here as you can see on NAV2. And on this aircraft, uh, NAV2, uh, NAV1 sorry, is our Garmin and NAV2 is our um, older 
Bendix King style instruments there. And we're again continuing out, uh, being careful to observe any uh, limitations for terrain or anything like that. And this isn't the whole procedure as you can see, it kind of starts off the chart there. Uh, we're not even going to fly as far as Tokes, as a matter of fact here momentarily, we're going to go ahead and begin our turn inbound. So Burbank is tuned on uh, Nav 1, so we're going to go ahead and start to make that turn around. And to get back on our localizer intercept, we're going to go ahead and adjust the autopilot into heading mode. And we'll plot a course uh, coming in there. We have 109.5 is selected active now. And the one thing I have forgot to do actually, and I'll uh, throw a text box up here soon, I forgot to adjust the final approach course, so you'll see that. We're going to verify the Morse code. If you zoom in, look at your av uh, Navigraph charts, rather. Uh, it has the uh, Morse code ident right there at the bottom, so you can verify that as it comes through. So we'll take a listen for that. So we have confirmed our ident there. We have the frequency correctly dialed up. We have identified it via its Morse code. So we can be sure that that's Burbank. And one of the unique things here, actually we'll go ahead and throw the autopilot to nav mode. And uh, this is kind of, uh, it doesn't make sense right now because I still haven't set that final approach course to 079. So I'm gonna do that now and then our indicator is going to uh, correctly swing around there. But again, the Burbank VOR, so uh, or sorry, the Burbank ILS, uh, this approach supplies obviously Burbank Airport. And we're gonna come in and then basically make a uh, 45 degree pattern entry into Van Nuys. As you can see, the airport uh, runway is 90 degrees off our final approach course, which is why, again, this is designated as an LDA, anything outside of 30 degrees. We're going to go ahead and begin our descent here and also because this is greater than 30 degree approach it will be a circling minimums which for this aircraft is about 700 feet, uh, 700 to 800 feet AGL or I believe it was 1500 feet MSL. And the visibility today is not helping as you can see we've got the low overcast and the kind of dense and foggy almost smoky appearance uh, the first time I flew this approach actually I'm gonna speed up this little segment here uh, to get us back on course the first time I flew this approach uh, it was the first time I had really recalled doing an LDA one especially with uh, with a 90 degree approach and I was sitting there on the localizer and I actually over flew the threshold the uh, approach corridor for this flies directly over the threshold for um, the uh, west runway there, I, I think it's 27 or 26, something like that. So I flew over it at pattern altitude uh, because I didn't know where to look. Uh, you know, I was trying as best I could to, to figure it out, but in doing so, you know, I looked at the aircraft and was like, oh, there, there it is right there, I'm over the approach. So before making this video, fortunately I made that error there, so I was able to go back and then did more research actually on what an LDA is and what the requirements are. So hopefully this is something, if you guys haven't shot an LDA, maybe it'll interest you, you can go check it out. I'm going to try and find a list of LDA approaches or similar um, and drop them probably in the comments section. That way you guys can go out and take a look. Just do something different, shake it up from the standard ILS. Uh, you could do it obviously for um, Kaitok being the most noticeable if you guys have that scenery from the xplane.org. You know, it, you came in on the runway 13 on the IGS and then it had that uh, visual right turn to, to land on runway 13. So, uh, airports big and small, you know, for general aviation and um, commercial aircraft. And there we have, there we have the airport out here. We're kind of looking for it trying to identify it so we can set up when to make our left turn. Uh, this was a right pattern airport. 
so uh, that's what I did here even though I departed uh, I departed left and to the uh, I think it was to the north yeah to the north sorry and then we are going to land to the west And now I'm going to fast forward us about three minutes just to move us a little closer to that final approach in our uh, circle to land procedure. For the next few uh, minutes here, we're going to adjust the altitude down. And I actually overshot the descent on this one once I entered functionally what is the uh, downwind leg. I overshot it and had to correct it. Yeah, if any of you have not flown this aircraft, the uh, Aspen Avionics suite works slightly different then at least kind of what I expected. Once you figure it out, it kind of comes around. It's fairly intuitive, but I uh, plan to do a video on this airplane. Again, this is the V-Flight Air Cherokee 140 Modern. You can also uh, put the steam gauges up there as we look out and identify where the airport is. And again, we're going to set this up as a visual procedure. Uh, with the close proximity of Van Nuys to Burbank, uh, the altitude control is very important because of course you have the aircraft flying as you can see there on live traffic uh, that guy is functionally flying the same localizer we are uh, just at a higher altitude and now I'll speed the recording up here rather than you guys watch about five minutes of how to fly a pattern uh, we enter the 45 here again trying to keep Van Nuys in uh, in visual contact because of course this is a instrument approach to a visual procedure so we'll turn out here get our downwind and then we'll resume normal speed on the final approach now we are losing the aircraft here uh, but uh, according to the chart it was a right pattern um, provided I looked at it correctly so we'll follow through here and again just um, trying to monitor we're at about 1700 feet which uh, was our minimum altitude so we'll do our gumps checklist gas to the fullest tank fuel pump on undercarriage down and locked which doesn't apply here mixture rich best power prop high rpm if needed uh, safety switches light seat belts brake pressure and carb heat and I forgot to do that here I actually uh, I think I forgot to enrich in the mixture Oh, actually, no, I didn't. I was looking at the RPM, and I have the carb heat on, so uh, this is one of those things, if you're used to flying the default Cessna 172, there's a few things in this aircraft, uh, carb heat being one of them, that the default one does not have, because obviously the 172 is fuel injected, whereas this is carbureted. So we'll stay in normal speed here for the final approach as we turn into Van Nuys and you can see it actually set us up for uh, we had a pretty good turn in here on approach I think we may get some live traffic pop in here I I don't remember I think I did this flight once or twice I'm uh, obviously narrating here in post-production so we're set up uh, speed control is pretty much on par I slowed down a little bit um, to uh, slow down a little too quickly in this put the flaps out and realized I was too far out and put them back up so uh, this was about my third or fourth flight in the Cherokee at the time of recording this so uh, again I'm planning to do a video with this aircraft show off some of it I thought of merging the two together but I think uh, for time's sake uh, it may be a little too much to combine it into one video so we'll just follow the aircraft down here uh, we'll throw in some external views and go ahead and wrap this video up here. Let you uh, check out the approach and hopefully introduce you to something new with the LDA. Maybe you'll get out there and if you have some pictures or suggestions, uh, different airports that have them, maybe that we are unable to find or don't mention, go ahead and drop them in the comments and uh, see if we can get the whole community out there doing something maybe they would not have normally done.
And as we wrap this up, and I'll roll in some external footage for you here, I want to remind all of you to join us on uh, Facebook at Flight Brothers FT, Instagram, Flight FT 2019, and Twitter at Flight FT. Those are all of our social media accounts, so uh, we post to fairly frequently, more active in the Facebook groups, uh, X Plane group on there as well, a few other ones. But uh, being Geek extraordinaires, we post news stories and photos of obviously our sim aircraft but also of real world aviation uh, news and stories and photos and significant achievements that we come across so if you're interested in that type of uh, material and news please make sure to hit up those social media accounts and give us a thumbs up like and a follow until next time i'm lee from flight brothers ft reminding you to plan the flight and fly the plan